Well, hey, my friends, I'm so glad that you're here with me on the podcast today. I am really excited to have a friend and a just incredible, incredible artist with me today, Grace Bomer, who I've known for many years here in Asheville. Uh, Grace, so glad that you are with me on the podcast today. Welcome. Thank you. Absolutely. Good to be here. Finally. <laughs> I know. I know. Absolutely. We've been trying to do this for years. In fact, I was I was telling Tanya uh, just the other day, I said, you know what? When I think about when we moved to Asheville, I don't know if you remember this, but you I, and do, your son, I do. I remember. You and your son Ben had me to uh, told me to meet him, meet y'all at Twelve Bones Barbecue, and right. we ate out there. And I was like, that was just the beginning of of a great friendship. Over I know there. you were just moving. You you had nothing going, and now look at you. <laughs> I know amazing. it. I know it. It's been it's been crazy. God but, is good. Yeah, he is. He is. So for those folks that are kind of just getting to know you, why don't you let us know just kind of who you are, what you do creatively, that sort of thing. And then we'll kind of jump into a little bit of, of your backstory. Well, I moved to Asheville long before you did. My husband took a job here in 1981. Wow. And this is 20, 2021, 22. Okay. Yeah. So I've done my 40 years of tribulation. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I look at it. I've been painting for over 20, 40 years. So I am old. Just get that straight first. <laughs> and, uh, so I've been painting in Asheville. When I came here, I was a member of the Kansas Watercolor Society. And I just went, we moved in the summer and I was already in the October show in the Asheville Art Museum in October of that same year. So I just went right from Kansas to North Carolina Watercolor Society, uh, got in and got awards and got very active in the local community here. I was a member of the Asheville Art Museum uh, board not the, some, it was the auxiliary, but yeah. I was immediately involved in the art uh, world here. So God, that was amazing. Cause how did I know that this city was such an art center, you know? Well, and that would become I such an become, art center now. I mean, I become, yeah. what was it like back then? I mean, cause you really have been such a pioneer in the arts community here in town and even the, even the river arts district and, and all of that. Yeah, that was long ago. I was more involved at that time. Uh, I guess, I don't know, it's because I was studying at UNCA as well. I was still building my art career, if you want to say that, still studying. Uh, when, when I, after teaching school for six years and then being in Kansas, that's when I really started my business, my art. And that's when I did not go into teaching. I was a Canadian, you know, didn't have my American citizenship. I didn't want to do that. So I just immediately went into art from teaching and mm -hmm. studying with a watercolorist and that's why I went into watercolor right away. But wow. then, so that's my backstory though, but that does influence. So when I got to Asheville, uh, I was involved in the art community here and in the state, you know, uh, watercolor society things, but uh, I don't know if I was a pioneer in the river district or anything that not necessarily. Well, you just been here, you've been here so long. And it's so funny for me to hear you talk about watercolor, because when I think about your work, I think of you know, all that you're doing now and, and, and that sort of thing. But, you know, so you, you you started out in watercolor. And I mean, how did how did that progression begin, you know, to happen for you? Because now when I look at your work and it's so beautifully complex and, and yet simple with, with the mixed media that you use and all that sort of thing. So, I mean, that's 40 years of evolution, right? right yeah, yeah. And watercolor is a very good place to start. I mean, it's, I'm learning design. I'm learning where to leave the lights, the whites and the darks and, uh, you know, just learning as mostly the techniques of that, but it's kind of a hard, hard way to start too, because you have to leave your white space. Yeah. With oil, you can do your whites, go over it with whites and still, but good design is important. And so I have to tell you a little bit about that study. Yeah. A lot of artists think they don't have to study, but you know, I have a degree in English and history. My art degree didn't come till later. Wow. Wow. Yeah. When I think about it, it's interesting you say that because when I think about your work and just kind of how you approach your work, you know, I know that God's word and, and this, this kind of tension between word and spirit and, and all of that moving through your work, that is such an integral foundational part of what you do. So did you always kind of approach your work like that? Or when did, when did that sort of spiritual connection start coming into your work? No, as well? all, always, because that goes back to my background because I have a degree in English and history and 
even as a young person, I was listening to Leonard, Leonard Cohen, Canadian. Yeah. Uh, I was listening, you know, sort of looking at the lyrics, really uh, very involved in what people are saying spiritually, uh, testing the spirits, because I was raised in a Christian home and, I, and my education at Dort College, which is now Dort University, was a Dutch reformed college in Iowa, where I was, that's where I got my degree. And it taught me a biblical view of reality. It taught yeah. me a worldview immediately. So I'm always immediately, that's my first uh, love. I mean, I, even in the arts, that's imp very important to me. So, um, you know, it's, it's so beautiful to hear you say that because when I, th you know, all of us uh, that are involved in the art world, you know, that's such a foreign viewpoint. And yet, when I think about you and anytime I've ever come into your studio and and seeing you interacting with people or see you online and that sort of thing. That is something that you are just, you have never backed up from and you are able to sort of naturally, supernaturally, if you will, be able to share the inspiration and the context of your work and that sort of thing. Has that always come naturally for you? Because I, I know for so many artists that are, that are Christians, that can really be a point of nervousness and kind of, trepidation, if you will, in the marketplace of kind of sharing the, the spiritual side of, of their work? Well, uh, okay, going back to my English major, <laughs> here's uh, how do you tell a good story? How do you write well? How do you do poetry? It's less is more. Mm. And you talk about metaphor and you talk like Jesus spoke in metaphor, in parables. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so you're not like Emily Dickinson said, you tell it slant. You're dealing with uh you're dealing with truth, but you're not like just hitting everybody over the head with the Bible or putting doves and crosses in your work. You know, you've got to deal with uh, who God is. He owns everything in creation, but he's always telling us who he is. Even like in scripture, I am a door. I'm a pearl. I'm the narrow way. I, you know, there's just so much rich uh, analogy in scripture that can be applied to art. Yeah. That's so that huge. Sense? Is that answering your question? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I just, I just think, you know, you are, you do it so joyfully and so naturally. And I think that just comes out of who you are as a person, because you're such a joyful, naturally relational kind of person as well. And yeah. I think, a, I think a Teacher. lot of times people feel this, um, I don't know, they feel this kind of overwhelming sort of desire to like, I got to tell everybody about every little thing in this in this piece, as opposed to creating the place out of that place of a piece out of that place of connection, and then allowing the work to speak. And I, that's something I think you just do really well is, is allowing your work to speak. Right. And I'm dealing with non-Christians a lot in my studio. Yeah. And uh, they are attracted to my work too. But if, you know, if God gives people eyes to see, they get it. But yeah. I've had gallery owners, they love my work. They'll read the back. I have all this scripture on it. They don't get it. <laughs> they're yeah. trying to get it but sometimes they don't get it even if it's right there in front of them so but i don't like preach at them yeah you know i'll have the words there and they'll see the words and god can pierce anybody's heart with a living word so yeah, absolutely uh, and i don't always put direct words of scripture on either a lot of times it's poetic poetry words but scripture too like uh behind one painting for example that was just in a show in madrid spain this year I had the whole book, I had Job written in the background. You know, God created the Pleiades. He knows the stars by name, that kind of yeah. thing. And then over top of it, it's kind of dark. And uh, But there's always the grid of God's sovereignty, God's love behind it. Uh, so if you look closely, you can see stuff, but you may not see it right away. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I, just, I just love that about, you know, just allowing art to be what it is because even if somebody you know isn't that a beautiful thought to think somebody buys this has no clue what it is just loves it aesthetically and then all of a sudden at the right time at the right <laughs> yeah. place in their journey you know right. all of a sudden it's like bing they see it yeah. for the first time and, or they're attracted to it even for the spiritual quality they don't maybe get it yet but yeah yeah but my biggest uh pay, my biggest patrons are christians mm, mm. yeah I now would you, say, but. you really have been so well collected and, and shown all over the country, even internationally and that sort of thing with museums and universities and, and all that sort of thing. How did that begin for you? And how did that really change or, or alter the 
the work that did it alter the work that you were creating and and the subject matters that you were creating and that sort of thing? Uh, well, already when I was in the North Carolina Watercolor Society, I was getting more and more abstract. I was never a really tight watercolorist. And uh, it wasn't until I went through hard times. Well, actually, it started before I was at UNCA and Tucker Cook was doing live models, crucifixions. And, mm. and he. I also had to deal with stuff like the naked male model and stuff yeah. like that. So I'm dealing with issues. But talking about his crucifixions, that was a big turning point. I was going through trials at that time myself. So one of my first paintings I did, that was actually in the classroom yet, was called Surely He Hath Borne Our Sorrows. And it was just done in an hour from a live model. Wow. And at that time going through trials, I remember a bit, this is all God, it's nothing to do with me. It, yeah. He did this all. And he, this businessman came to me, says, you need to charge more for your paintings. You're just like, excellent, but you need, you're charging like $300 for this? $1,000, I was entering a show at, at Touchstone Gallery in Hendersonville. Uh, it was a religious show. For, I can't remember the title, but yeah. anyway, I entered that crucifixion and I put $1,000 on it and, and it sold immediately. And it was like God telling me, yeah, you just need to get going with that. But as far as a career and studying, uh, I was always entering shows. I was building a resume. I, yeah. Even yeah. though I didn't really study what is art, I knew that I had to enter shows to see if I was credible, if I was a good artist. It's about design and mm -hmm. you know all these things that they look for. Uh, so I would enter a North Carolina watercolor show for, with a painting called, Then the Trees Shall Sing, for He is Coming Again, or, you know, something from Psalm, I don't remember, 96, maybe? He, anyway, and the uh, get a phone call. I would pray that God would give me first place. Yeah. I could do that. <laughs> the phone would ring, and, and the judge would read the scripture to me and say, you got the first place award, blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Awesome. So, so I'm always entering shows i'm involved with the secular culture as well yeah uh, i went to uh, western carolina to take a graduate course in painting and if that really changed my direction because uh as far as abstraction goes uh, i was still a, very much of a draftsman and learning that trade but this guy i won't even say his name because <laughs> he said i did not understand how art operated as <laughs> art Okay. We won't mention him. <laughs> <laughs> the reason being, I was a Christian in his setting, and it, uh, this is a whole story right here. But uh, he said, you know, he tried to break me of my stylization. Mm. He made me draw with my left hand, wow. with my eyes closed, off the side of the bed. So I started doing this sketchbook full of uh, Christian, I mean, my verses, like I did, Lord, show me your glory. At that time, I was in the whole God asked me, how, how do I paint as a Christian? Yeah. Show me your glory because I want to paint who you are. And I, so I did a drawing of a Job like figure on with my left hand sitting on an ash heap, uh, poetry around it. Uh, it was a very powerful piece and it was done with my left hand. It was very childlike, you know. Mm. Uh, so that that is a big turning point. And so realizing I don't have to do everything in the lines, you know, it's just like that emotional, you know, left hand drawing thing. That's so Which, good. I don't use my left hand anymore, but that <laughs> series, I did another one called uh, We Are Living Stone, Living Stones, you know, like God mm -hmm. is making us alive, throwing these jewels in the air. But, uh, you know, how would you paint that? Yeah. But you can paint it better with, in your mind with your left hand. <laughs> just mm -hmm. try it. See, with, see if you could do it. Yeah, yeah. You know, anyway, I just what was your question again? I forgot. Now. No, it was just great. The, just the evolution of your work and how it, it's all come. And, and I the thing that it's it's been it's just interesting to hear me know you and hear your story because I think of you in in a couple of different ways. I mean, obviously an incredible artist, but you are so joyful and confident, and yet you're so humble in the Lord. Just realizing that I know that I'm a part of God's story. This is Him driving this thing and that sort of thing. Have you always been as as joyfully confident as you are? Because I think one of the things that, you know, mentoring artists, you know, through the podcast and the mentoring program and all that, so much of the stuff that that I'm always helping artists kind of deal with is this kind of just junk filled thinking that I'm not good enough. I can't do this. You know, I'm disqualified, all this sort of thing. And I just I hear you saying even 40 years ago, yep, 
I was applying for things, man. I was putting it out there, wishing for first place. So is that innate in you or, or is that a developed skill, I guess? No, I don't know. When I started out after teaching, I was ready to go because I had one million <laughs> artists since I was an 11th kid, you know? Yeah. Well, finally, I get to do art. Well, so here I'm studying. I only took a six-week watercolor class. Wow. And then I entered the state fair in the town we lived in was Hutchinson, Kansas, where the state fairgrounds are. They have an annual state fair, art show, whatever. So I entered it. I had only not even studied six weeks yet. And I entered it and got first place and got the whole thing. You know, I'm just saying you have to put it out there. You got to do it. You got to do your work. You got to learn the rules. Yeah. I mean, you've got to study. Yeah. And build up, build up your resume. So uh, if somebody's wanting to know how to do that, you know, enter shows to see, because you're, you're always dealing with non-believers that aren't necessarily going to pick, they're going to look at your design. They're not going to look at your subject matter. Maybe, you know, of course they like story and they like spiritual stories too. So I have, you have an end. I mean, go for it. Just enter stuff. I entered Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane when I was at UNCA, a live model figure of Jesus crouching like a broken, like an olive in a press. Wow. And I entered it and it was a four foot by four foot painting. And Philip Perlstein, who's a big name in New York City, who does all the nude, you know, I don't know if you know Philip Perlstein. Yeah. He was a juror and it got in and it was like in this prominent place at UNCA's gallery. Uh, so the subject matter of being Christian, I think it actually attracts. Mm. Because hey, what's that about? You know, Christianity. Yeah. Even though today we're we've come a long way since, and we're in postmodernism, and the world is a text to be developed for power. Words are power, and they would look at the Christian narrative today as totalitarian narrative. It's like mm. it's a grand narrative that you have to get a get rid of. Uh, mm. I'm talking philosophy here now, yeah, so yeah. it's a little harder. Uh, today, I think, I don't know, I haven't entered as many shows today. That was when I was still doing UNCA. So I don't know how that would be today. Uh, entering. You know, I think the thing that I always appreciate about about you, and, and one of the things I think when, even when I came to Asheville, you know, you, you realize, okay, like this is, this is the big leagues. Like this is, there's serious artists here that if you want to play in this, in this sandbox, you know, you got to bring your, bring your a game and your, your work has always spoken on its own, regardless of the subject matter or, or the metaphor that you're using or whatever you've all, you have excellent work. And I think that's the thing. So many, I think so many artists that come back to their art or come to their art with this desire to, you know, glorify God and what they're doing and that sort of thing. It's so easy for them to, what I would say, play the God card. That is, you know, my art is great, but just because I love Jesus. And it's like, you can love Jesus and you can have bad art, you know? (laughs) And and so it's like you're saying, do the work, right? Learn the, learn the principles, learn the rules and and then expand from there. So, and then uh, a little suffering thrown in, you need that, Yeah. Uh, you know, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. Hmm. So until, uh, myself and my own journey went through that suffering too and gave it all to God. Yeah. It was not about me because I was doing that before. It was all pretty little paintings or, you know, how to build myself up, how to climb the ladder of get all my work done and, and get a resume. Mm. God is the one anyway, all along that honestly yeah. directs your life. And he even causes the sufferings to grow you. So, wow. Wow. Um, you know, don't worry about a little suffering. <laughs> yeah. You need that in your life. So if you're having a hard time, you know, right now, just use that because the world respects brokenness. People are broken. And so if you're doing all this sugar-coated, happy painting stuff of glory, which is there too, God's beautiful creation, uh, they don't identify as much. Mm. I, I mean, they, we, they know we all are broken. Uh, so if you are realistic about your suffering, I think it's a good thing. Yeah, that's so good. You know, one of the things I know that you love to do as well as is your own studio practices is, is teach. And you've been so gracious over the years to be a part of, I think just about every gathering of artisans that we've ever had from the, you remember the first one we had way back at Camp Rockmont in the, in the, uh, I mean, that was like crazy. We had rented that camp out and I remember you coming in there, you had a slideshow and all this, and but you love teaching, you teach in your studio, you're going to be teaching in our gathering of artisans uh this year talk about 
your kind of perspective, I guess, as a teacher, because every time uh, people come out of your class, they're just like, oh my gosh, it was so incredible, all this stuff. What, <laughs> and you introduced me to so many people, but not only, okay, the teaching thing, I love teaching and uh, because I taught, I guess it's in my blood, but yeah. uh, sharing what we're sharing is a big part of your painting, right? Mm. Uh, the process is also, you know, I try to get them to tell their story because my work tries to bring who God is, like mm. incarnation. It, uh, it's all, I call it incarnational. It is bringing together spirit and flesh. Jesus is spirit, but he's also became a man. So yeah. a lot of my work has the figure in it, has story in it, because I say on my website, it's the everlasting story. It's the mm. true everlasting story. And in our day where everything is a story and everybody's got their own story, there is one overarching true story. Yeah, and yeah, so yeah. Uh, that's what we need to try to do as believers. And so visual storytelling, you can even go into uh, all the stories in the Bible. Like I have one of Abraham's sacrificing his Isaac, uh, very abstract, but it's about the story of Abraham sacrificing his son and God sacrificing his son, Jesus. So, yeah, so you can use many stories of scripture yeah. in an abstract way or, you know, yeah, that's kind of how I teach it, making, helping them to make visible the invisible. Mm -hmm. And, and then of course we haven't even touched on word, but word is like so important Yeah. in my work and also like incorporating it in and your statement uh, in a lot of different ways. Yeah. Well, every time our students come out of there during gathering, they're like, this is the most incredible, you know, workshop I've ever done. So I'm going to have to make my way over there one day. I've tried to schedule a class with you and the, we had the dates. You I, know. Know. I was like, I want to go take a class, but you it's know, just like this, this uh, podcast, we can't seem to get I know it. it. I know it, but Carol, thank you so much for, for being on the podcast today. It's such a, it's, it's just wonderful. See, I'm still calling you Carol, but it's, it's Grace Bomer. It's not Carol. It's Grace Bomer. Carol. That's right. I didn't really rebrand myself. I'm just using my first name instead of my second name. That's right. That's right. But I, great. I love hearing your story and just uh, all that God's doing in and, and through you. I know that folks are, are going to want to connect with you uh, further to see your work and and all that. So where's the best place that they can do that online and on social and that sort of thing? My just my website is gracecarolbomer.com. And on Instagram, it's Grace Bomer awesome. at Instagram or whatever. Awesome. I don't well, know if there's a hyphen in there. That's right. That's right. Well, I'm hey, it's sure a joy why. to call you friend. Thank you for being on today. And um, guys, if you're looking for a great workshop, we hope that you're considering coming to Gathering of Artisans this year. I think this is our 15th one that we've done uh, both here and internationally and it's going to be incredible uh, in uh, the mountains here in August but uh, and uh, if you're lucky you can get in one of Grace's classes. Oh good I hope it's full <laughs> Grace thank you so My much. My studio isn't that big. <laughs>